Hey guys, Jason here with a word to the wise. Please excuse this angle. My wife got me a tablet for Christmas that I'm able to um, put my a, a studio app, which I quite enjoy, onto. And um, I just want to kind of play with this. But like I said, it's a tablet. I have a Jeep Liberty. It's a very small um, space not a lot of dashboard or anything really to mount to but my phone also is dead right now i was listening to some uh, armor of truth which i don't usually do but I, I i felt it was kind of an interesting topic talking about the um the football player i just wanted to kind of hear that what i want to bring to you guys today i it's connecting scripture. What does it all mean? I'll get to, but I just want to show you the connections in scripture. And then we'll talk about the opinionated ideas at the end. Now, this is talking about Revelations um, chapter 9 and chapters 11. And the things that make them similar it's not talking about Apollyon's army, but the sixth trumpet talks about another um, army. So if you've already released one army on the earth, what is the need of the second one? We'll get to that. When you're looking at the two witnesses, so let's do that. And we'll slowly work our way back to this, and we'll get to where I'm showing We'll get to the, the, I think it's in Joel. So, um, the sixth angel, which he had the, which had the trumpet, loosed the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year, for to slay a third part of men. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of, as the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three, a third of men were killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. Now, if you look over at the Lord's two witnesses, chapter 11, verse 5, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemy. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have the power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, nor and have power over the waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they finish their testimonies, Apollyon, who came out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. So, fire comes out of their mouth. And in the sixth trumpet army, fire proceeds out of their mouth. Now, if we jump into, let me save my page. Let's look at Joel chapter 2. And we'll start in the first part of verse 1, and we'll go to verse 2 and 3. Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. A day of darkness. A day of gloom and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is the guard as is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Their appearances of them 
is as the appearance of horses uh, and of horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on top of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flaming of fire that devoureth the stubble as strong people set in battle array. Now, just an interesting couple things I want to point out here in Joel. Verse 7. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the walls like men of war. And they shall not march every one on his way, and they shall not break their ranks. Now, just so people don't get kind of thinking that this is Apollyon's army, go down to verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, and he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And if you go over to verse 25 in chapter 2, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among, excuse me, that I sent among you. My great army. And again in verse 11, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. But, interesting in that verse 11 too, For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. And when you're also looking at that verse 7, they shall run like mighty men. Like mighty men. If you're a, a soldier, you're pretty much like a mighty man. Unless you're looking at some of those... Um, the, the sons of the Nephilim, like that's what the legends and the lore came from, uh, like, say, like Hercules, or say Conan, or something like that, I don't know, but stories of the mighty men of the time, back in the day, they were, you know, sons of the Nephilim, or they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the walls like men of war, are they talking about, say, some sort of a robot? They're like men, but they're not men. Is it talking about angels? Is it talking about how they are like men? But would you compare an angel to the mightiest of men? Wouldn't angels be larger and stronger than most mighty men anyway? Or is it using mighty men as a reference to something that is showing you how strong a person is? Say a woman or children. Somebody that is strong that executeth his word. So now, you're looking at the two witnesses. The two witnesses have a way of spitting fire proceedeth out of their mouth. It also makes me think of Jesus when he says that, um, I will bring the sword of my mouth. The word will cut like a, like a two-edged sword. Paraphrasing. And the same thing with the sixth the sixth trumpet army. Now, if you go to the bottom of, of where it speaks of Apollyon, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more. Hereafter, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice of the four horns. Okay, so that goes on to the sixth trumpet. So now when you go over to chapter 10, and you read into chapter 11, and after they, the two witnesses are slain and called up, then comes the earthquake, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of, of kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, 
and he shall reign forever and ever. So all of that sixth trumpet army happens and the two witnesses happen and that is part of the second woe. Let me close this up and just go into what kind of a point I'm trying to make here is when you're looking at say that Joel army and you take those ideas into, into your mind and the sixth trumpet army and you look at the two witnesses what is their what is their their they're doing is they're spitting fire and brimstone kind of like a thing that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah excuse me but what comes after them is the earthquake. And here again, it talks about slaying a third of man. But if you're not in Christ, then you're facing the judgment. And if you're facing the judgment, what is the end game if you get cast into the bottomless pit or into hell is the second death. So the books were open in the end, and those of the world were judged. So, I'm trying to keep this all very straight and, and, and simple, is when you're looking at that Sixth Trumpet Army, they're, they're like the appearance of horses. They run strong and firm into battle, and... What are they battling against? They're battling against Apollyon's army and those that come out of that. But if you watch that video I put out, um, that's just pretty much scripture. I didn't want to get my voice involved into that because I, I, I run long. I get a lot of those ums and uhs and I, I don't, I'm not very well spoken. I make videos like this over and over and over and over trying to get it right. So here again. Looking at this kind of an idea, where does, where do the saints, where does the beheading happen? Where does, you know, the blood that is spilt say in, in what is it, Revelation 16, the third bowl being poured out. They've spilled the blood of the saints and the prophets and you have given them blood to drink. So in that, where in Revelations does that blooding, that, that, that killing, the slaying, where does that happen and who are they? Where are they? You know, is it only spoken pretty much in like, say, the Great Harvest in chapter 14? There's those in captivity um, in Revelation 13. Those who do not worship the beast or his image or take the mark, they're, you know, to be killed. So with the two witnesses, the witnesses are... are Pretty much, they cannot be killed. They cannot be stopped until the time is right for them to be slain. And there's only one person that can do it, and that's the Apollyon who comes up out of the bottomless pit. I can only take as, as Scripture says. You know, I can only deduce that. So here again, the saints, those who are strong in the word, and I've said this in that last video where, not the football player one, but the one just before that, where they will love the deception of the world. Who comes out of the pit? What are they spewing out of their mouths? Are they spewing all this, this false, falsehood scripture, false teachings, false ways, false walk, on and on and on. And then when you have the, the sixth trumpet army, those who come up out of that going against Apollyon and his his army, if they are the beasts of the earth, as in like the say the fourth horseman, and they are just doing nothing but just tarnishing and deceiving all the people into doing all these things, because they're again looking at what's what's the uh, the beast that comes out of the earth, the second beast. What are they trying to do? They're trying to get people to worship, and they're trying to convince them of, of worshiping the first beast. Ah. Not looking for some sort of a, a demon 
filled earth. You were, they're going to sit there and, you know, horns and, and, and red skin saying, oh, worship the devil or die. It's like, I'm pretty sure that'd be pretty easy for everybody to say, you guys can go up a creek because obviously there's some good and evil going on here and you guys must be the evil side. I doubt that the world is going to be somehow, you know, convinced through electromagnetic waves or something that to just zombify and just go along with the program. I think the world has watched too many movies and people just want to simplify it as easy as they can, but they're not testing and, and thinking about what is really going on. And that's what I think is really going on. Apollyon brings his deception to have people worship the false way, the wrong way, and they might even say, you know, oh, Jesus, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. But he, he, he loves people that are, are, are wicked and evil and, and, and watch porn and, and swear and they don't do anything good in this world. But as long as you're doing, you know, you just think this way, boom, boom, boom. Here, worship this way. Put a little this and that and, and do your yogas and blah, blah, blah. Meditate, blah, blah, blah. But when those people come and they start spouting Jesus doesn't do it that way. Jesus does it this way. This is the only thing that is true. We're not misconstruing it over thousands of years and, oh, now we've messed it all up and, you know, we're, we're uptight. But see, that's, what, that, that's what's going to bring the world, like in the, the two witnesses. They are killed and they, the people of the world, the people's nations and tongues, of the waters that were, you know, follow after the, the woman, the prostitute who prostitutes herself out to what? Anything and everything that just might fit into their new world styled religion. I think it's as, as simple as that. And I think if anybody's trying to say that, you know, no, there's going to be this whole upbringing from Planet X is going to pop up out of the woodwork and blah, 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 blah. So sick of Planet X talk and all that garble. There's a simple thing happening here, and that's why it's been told from the beginning and the end. And I think that because of Hollywood, because of all those deceivers that are out there already, part of Polyon's army, whether they know it or not, they're spouting all the garbage that just gets the world to follow after it. And that's where I think this whole thing can get very dangerous. And I think, you know, where else are you going to find? And, and this is just an opinion. I'm not saying that I'm right. But what else could be going on here? Because if all of a sudden Jesus and God, they release some massive 200 million man army of, of angels that is just flowing over the earth. And they're just destroying men in some biblical battle scene. Here again, how can people say that the Bible isn't real, that God isn't real? But here again, they're going to say, worship however you want. Do as thou wilt. And I think that's where everything's going to come down to. Where do you stand? You have to understand that we're not spouting, you know, we're not just talking about this because you know, it's just an opinion or, you know, we're just deceived by a book. No, I firmly believe that Jesus is going to come back. I think all these things are coming. And I'm trying to do as much as I can to decipher what's really going on. And I am thankful for channels like Days of Noah and On Point Preparedness because seeing how the world is reacting to tyranny and and all this medical scenarios easily can then control people's emotions to draw them into whatever just comes up that just fits a better way than what they were told by social medias and all this world economic forums and blah 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 blah, blah. all these things that are just like ridiculous eat bugs and have nothing and, and love it no. They're showing you the worst of the worst, and when it doesn't happen, what are you left with? Fighting against these kinds of things so that way you keep yourself 
good in this world. Everything that you want, that people want, not us, but what people want, they desire, they want to have, they want to be left alone and they want to do what they want to do and they want to continue doing what they have been doing. Why change anything? Hopefully this makes sense. And like I said, if I find more, I'll, I'll, I'll point out more of why. But here again, using that video from the other day and this, mesh these together in the trumpets. And it's, it's a great unrighteousness and a false truth, I think, is what the great deception is going to be about. And whether you stand truthfully in the truth, truth and you will stand for your that truth versus going with the world that's trying to draw everybody into some you know let's rebuild the world in in our our way that we feel we should have our way you know just not these these elites with all their craziness all right i gotta go just a word to the wise god bless guys hopefully this makes sense and like i said it's, it's just a very interesting way to look at things that I've never heard really much of anybody talk about, but does this army be led by the two witnesses? And they're housed in that great city. Just the word of the wise.